Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the sixth and final video of the SwiftUI to-do app series, where we build a to-do app from scratch in SwiftUI, and then refactor it to use the Combine framework. In this video, we'll be completing our transformation to Combine by removing the app published property wrapper from our two properties, and instead create two current value subject publishers and subscribers to handle the updates. I recommend that you watch the previous videos in the series, but if you're just starting here, you can download the completed project from the last video from the link in the notes below. Now, if you enjoy this series, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to get notified when new videos are released. I'd also encourage you to leave comments below, and if you're so inclined, you can support my work by buying me a coffee. I'll leave a link to that in the notes below too. Links to all the videos are also there. Now just a note, because at published is baked into SwiftUI, I wouldn't normally do this because there's no need. Still, in the interest of completion, let's take a look at how at published can be replaced by a current value publisher and a corresponding subscriber. So what is a current value subject publisher? Well, we've seen SwiftUI's published property wrapper that creates a publisher. And we have seen a pass-through subject publisher and the just publisher. Both the pass-through subject and the current value subject both conform to the subject protocol, which means that you can call send on them to push new values downstream at will. The main difference is that the current value subject has a sense of state whereas the pass-through subject simply relays values directly to the publishers without remembering the current value. So if we're to convert to-dos to a current value subject, we're going to need to specify the output type as an array of to-do with a failure type of never, as we've done with the pass-through subjects. But as I said, the current value subject requires an initial value, which in our case is an empty array. Well, now that we've removed the at publish property wrapper, we can no longer use the dollar sign to refer to the publisher of the array of to-dos. Down in the to-do subscription function, as I said, we don't have a published property anymore. We have a publisher, so we no longer need to use that dollar sign to access the publisher. It is one. So in order to access the underlying value, we'll need to access its value. So in load to dos, in the receive value, we can assign it like this. In add to do, we have the same issue. We need to access the value. In update to do, we need to access the value in two places. One here, and the other one here. And finally, in delete to do, we have to fix it here. If we build now, we get two errors, and this is because we're trying to cycle through an array of a publisher, when again, what we need to access is its value. If we build, all the errors are gone. Is that all there is to it? Well, let's test. Well, something's wrong. My to-dos aren't loading. If I create a new one, it appears to be saving. I can see by the report in the console that they're being saved, but the view's not being rebuilt. And the reason is that the current value subject and a published property are not exactly the same thing. When we created this data source view model, we had to make it an observable object. Then by decorating the to-do array with the at published property wrapper, Swift automatically behind the scenes executes the object will change method on our data source so that any struct that's observing an instance of this will receive that change notification and update the view. Well, without the at publish property wrapper though, our data source isn't notified. So what we need to do is to tell our view model that things are going to change. So where we receive our to-dos, we'll need to tell our class, the observable object, that something has changed. So it can broadcast it to the views that are monitoring the environment object. We simply do that by saying self, object will change, send. 
If I run the app now, our items are displayed. If I add a new item, however, notice that there is an indication that it'll change, but the list is not updated. So back in our data source, each time we update the array of to-dos, we have to send that message that will be the object will change. This is in add to do, update to do, and delete to do. Let's run once more and test. First, let's delete one. Next, let's update one. And finally, let's add one. We're getting an indication in each case that the file was saved successfully. Stopping and running again confirms that for us. Well, there's just one more variable that is decorated with the app published property wrapper. So you might as well do the same thing for it. It's the app error. Let's comment out this line then and create a current value subject instead, this time with an output type of an optional error type. The failure type will be never and we'll give it an initial value of nil. Well, app error without the dollar sign is now the publisher, so we can't assign a value to it, but we can send a value to the publisher, so it can assign that to the current value state. Well, there are four errors in our code, so we need to change these assignments all to a send to the publisher. If we build, we still get one more error, and that's because in content view, our alert is being presented based on the state of an app error, and that's now a publisher, so we need to access the app errors value. Now we still don't have a subscriber to this publisher yet, so in our app subscriptions function, we can add one. We'll start with app error, and then apply the sync operator. Now we don't need to do anything with the receive value, it's already been set. But what we do need to do is to notify our class that the object is changing so that it can notify its observers. So we'll just use underscore here and then use the object will change send method. And of course, because it's a subscription, we need to store it in our set of subscriptions. Let's test. First, let's just copy this path once more and open the Documents folder. Let's invalidate that JSON one more time so that we can create an error. Let's run it one more time. And our familiar app error is displayed. We can create a new to-do and we're back in business. Stop and start and everything as it should be. So that completes this tutorial series. We've built a Swift UI app and then refactored it to use the combined framework. Along the way, we learned about the pass-through subject, just, and current value subject publishers, as well as the Swift UI at published property wrapper implementation of a publisher. We also learned about subscribing to the publisher and manipulating and receiving values to meet our particular needs. I hope that this has made some sense to you and will encourage you to investigate Combine. I only have scratched the surface and even if you don't use it in your own code, you may now understand it a bit better should you read someone else's code. Now before I leave you, I want to share with you some of the resources that I've used in my path to getting a better understanding of Combine. I've spent a great deal of money and, to be honest, have not yet completely worked my way through any of these resources completely. Not for lack of trying. Each one is something different to offer, and I can't really recommend one over the other. The more different approaches that I watch and read, the clearer it comes to me. I think I've reached a turning point in my path now and can comfortably start to use it in my projects. These are the ones that I have purchased to date. This was my first purchase from Ray Wenderlich. It was a pre-purchase, actually, just after it was announced in 2019 at WWDC. 
I also subscribe to most Muhammad Azam's Udemy courses. His approach closely follows the Ray Wenderlich book, so if you enjoy videos over books, this is a good alternative. For Ben Shearman, or Subdigital, to be honest, this one got a bit over my head quickly, but I plan to go back to it, as I'm pretty sure now I'll get a lot more out of it. Donnie's book is a great introduction with some really good examples. And Daniel's approach is completely different, and it made some things a lot clearer for me here, too. And this one, Karen's site, is very comprehensive, and as I mentioned, I'm enjoying the practical examples very much. And the one I'm really looking forward to is the release of Big Mountain Studio, Mark Moykin's guide, as I'm a big fan of his resources. I've had early access to some of the early chapters, and it may already be available by the time you watch this video. Mark has a really great and personable approach. Enjoy your coding. <laughs>